Hey guys, and welcome to our second video in the Get Started with Pi series. I'm Jenny. And I'm Cabe. In our first episode, we got our Pi up and running with all the peripherals connected and the appropriate operating system installed. We sure did. And now that we're up and running, in this video, we're going to explore some of the things the Pi can actually do. So we set up the Pi to boot to the desktop. In addition to the icons on the desktop, there's some functionality you'll be interested in here in the tray of the screen. In the lower left-hand corner, if you click on the icon, you'll see a file manager tool that allows you to access things like accessories, a calculator, an image viewer, and things like preferences where you can modify the look and feel of the display to your liking. To the right of that is the file manager icon, which opens an explorer type window so you can access files. On the far right, there are icons for power and time. Double clicking on the time will pop up a calendar month for you of the current month. This is helpful for answering the nagging question, what day is it again? Of course, you can also open programs by clicking on the desktop icons. We're not going to review all of them in this video, but we'll touch on some of the ones we skip in future videos in the Get Started with Pi series. There are several simple games written in Python pre-installed on your Pi. You can play them by clicking the Python Games icon. First, a dialog will pop up asking you to choose the audio output. Your best bet is to select Leave As Is and click OK. Of course, you'll need speakers, an HDMI monitor with audio capability, or earbuds directly plugged into the RCA jack on the Pi to hear the sounds. These are all very simple games, most controlled by the keyboard and arrow keys. If you're interested in learning Python, which is a great language to get started with understanding programming, then you'll be interested in knowing that the source code for these games can be found on the Pi. That means you can open up the source code, experiment by editing some of the code and experiencing the results. Another tool on the Pi that's great for learning about programming is Scratch. Scratch was developed by folks at the MIT Media Lab with the purpose of making intro to programming more accessible to kids ages 8 to 16. But it's used by people that are all ages. It's a completely graphical experience, no writing lines of code. When you first open up Scratch, you see the screen divided into four main areas. This area has actions and control categories, all grouped and color-coded based on what they do. Clicking on these icons displays different lists of commands below. To the right is the script area, where you build the commands in order to make something happen to the sprite. The sprite can be chosen in this area. You can select one of the sprites that comes with Scratch or create your own using the paint editor, which pops up when you click this icon. And finally, there's the stage, where you'll be able to see the results of your code blocks you select. So let's say we want to make the cat walk and turn and walk and turn, but bounce off the side if he hits it. So we'll go to motion and select move 10 steps. Let's change that to 25 steps and drag it to the scripts area. Then let's have the kitty turn by selecting this turn 15 degrees. Let's change that to 5 degrees and dragging it on the scripts area. You'll notice that if I drag this block close to the move 10 steps block, a white line shows up between them. That means they can be joined. The blocks even have little tabs, like puzzle pieces, that show they can connect. Let's go ahead and connect these two blocks. One thing I realized in playing with this was I can't disconnect blocks by clicking on the top one. If I do that, I actually move the entire group. However, when I just click the bottom piece, I can drag and disconnect them apart. Good catch. So we have Scratch walking 25 steps and then making a slight turn. Let's now put in the script a command that'll have him bounce off the wall if he hits it. Ah, sneaky, the introduction of an if statement. Drag the if on edge bounce block to the script area and connect them. Okay, now if we want to see what these three blocks can do together, we double click the code block. Every time we click the code block, these actions are demonstrated in the stage. Okay, that's a lot of clicking to get him over to the wall and see him bounce. True, let's add some more blocks from the control blocks like this forever block. You'll notice it has a U shape with a tab in the center of the U. When you drag it over the existing code block, the white line will display and the U will expand to enclose the existing code block. As long as we're here, let's put the when flag click command on top of the entire set. Now we can use the flag and stop controls above the stage area. This is kind of hypnotic. What else can we look at? Let's look at the LX terminal by clicking on this icon. There are some programs and commands that can't be run by clicking on an icon on the desktop. LX Terminal lets you run commands or programs by entering its name at the prompt after the blue dollar sign and pressing enter. To the left of the dollar sign, it says Pi at Raspberry Pi. This means you're logged in as a user Pi to the machine named Raspberry Pi. 
Although we haven't covered it because we've been using the starter kit pre-formatted 8 gigabyte SD card, if you're not using this version of the software, it's worth noting that if you're prompted for your username and password at any time, the default for every Raspberry Pi is username Pi and password Raspberry, all lowercase. Some good commands you want to know, the ls or list directory, that'll display all files in the current directory, the cd or change directory, which lets you change the current directory or folder, the program and directory show up in blue, and then the files show up in pink. Type cd space desktop with a capital D and press enter. Remember, not only does spelling count when entering commands in LX terminal, but capitalization matters too. You'll see that slash desktop now appears in blue before the dollar sign. To go back up one level in the folder tree, type cd space dot dot, then press enter. If you're not sure which folder you are connected to, you can use pwd, lowercase, or print working directory. It prints it to the screen. Type pwd and press enter. It should say forward slash home forward slash pi. So another thing you can do from the LX terminal is get back to the Raspberry Pi configuration module. Remember that we first saw that on our first boot up of the Pi on our previous video, but not when we booted up again. Say you started Pi up for the first time with a USB keyboard that you pilfered from another computer in your house. But once you started playing with your Pi, you realized that it needed a more permanent keyboard. But when you added a new keyboard, some of the keys weren't working correctly. What you probably need to do is revisit the config module and select the appropriate keyboard. To do that, type sudo space raspy dash config and press enter. Sudo is a command that basically means run this as super user, since your regular user Pi doesn't have permission to run this, but that's okay. We don't want to operate the Pi with super admin privileges. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard, move to internationalization options, tab OK, enter, then select the third option keyboard, change keyboard layout. The list of supported keyboards will be displayed sorted by manufacturer's name. Scroll until you find one that represents a close match to your keyboard. Press space, then tab, OK, and enter. Of course, the config changes won't go in effect unless you reboot it. We can now close the configuration module, and once we're back in the dollar sign, we'll type sudo reboot. OK, so one last thing that I've been wondering about. What if I want to add a USB flash drive to my Pi so I can look at pictures or save things from my Pi to the USB drive? Well, first, let's plug it in. Well, you have to give that right back <laughs> yeah. to me then, and then I'll plug it in. Right? OK, we wait a minute. And this version of Raspbian will automatically discover that USB flash drive. Oh. Now, when this pops up, select, have this selected open in file manager, click OK, and there you go. All right, so double clicking on any image file with an extension like .jpeg or .png will open that file in the Raspberry Pi image viewer, just like that. There's a few ways you can uh, access it or move it to your desktop. So one way is you can just simply click an image drag it to the desktop. Easy. That's easy. So anyways, you can also copy over videos too. So same exact way, you can just drag and drop it. Yours. Now that you've ejected the USB flash drive, it is safe to remove it. No, like, I'm just going to make you do that. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So you'll see that the images and video file are still on the desktop, which means it's taking up space on the SD card on the Raspberry Pi itself. So let's say you want to remove some of these from the SD card. You can just select them, hit delete. You can right click it if you want. You can also select delete, hit yes. So I feel like we have a pretty good grasp getting around the pie. But I know I want to know more. I'm sure everyone else out there does too. Like, what's that Midori icon all about? That's a good question. And we're going to go over that when we get the pie online in the next episode. Okay. Until then. I'm Caden. And I'm Jenny. Have fun with your pie. We'll see you guys next time. There's a link to start a discussion on this page and every page in the Get Started with Pi section of element14.com. We have over 200,000 members, including lots of Raspberry Pi experts who will be able to help you out.